Hi, my name's Michael and welcome back to another episode of Amarok Weekenderlander. This week we're going to do something a little bit different in this episode and we're going to talk about 3D printing but still in relation to overlanding and camping. Like a lot of people who get a 3D printer, I've just wanted to 3D print everything so I used it as an opportunity to troll Thingiverse and find some of my favourite things to print and some of the things that I've made myself and printed along the way. If you don't have a 3D printer, there are plenty of services out there that you can use to send a design off and get printed. Or you'll be surprised to know that they're actually quite cheap, but also you will probably know somebody with one. They're becoming a lot more prevalent now. So without further ado, let's get into it and have a look at some of my 10 favorite things that I printed in relation to um, camping and overlanding. These are all sort of luxuries and not necessities, but they are things that I've just decided to print along the way, really liked and thought I'd put them in a collection for you. All the links for the things are in the description below so please feel free to download them and print them at your pleasure and let me know if there's anything that you think I'm missing that I should print as well. So in relation to what printer do I use, I've got an Ender 5 Pro that I got from a friend. He very, very kindly sent it to me after it broke and says you can have it if you fix it. So that's what I did. He runs a company called Ducted or Duct3D. Put a link on the screen below. Please go there and show him some love. He, he sort of designs and makes his own parts for performance cars. So if that can be anything of use to you, please do go there. The other thing that people talk about when it comes to 3D printing is filament. So that is something that is worth having a bit of a talk about as well. Everything I've printed here is in PLA and it's by a company called Sunlu or I also use it from Polyprops. Links will be in description and marked as affiliates as such if appropriate. But it's black, white and grey that I've used so far and I really, really like that filament in conjunction with my printer. Even if you don't have a 3D printer or aren't interested in 3D printing, please do stick around and have a watch because there are some things here that might help you. But there are products here that you can buy off Amazon. They might just be a little bit more expensive, but it is worth maybe buying them for, for when you're out there. For everything in front of me, there will be a link to Thingiverse. There will be also the time that it took to print on my Ender 5 Pro and also the the amount of filament it used. I used a 210 degree hot end temperature and a 55 degree temperature on the bed and that's sort of I've had no issues with that whatsoever. So without further ado let's get into it. Print number one is obviously not the gas canister but it's more the lid on it itself. It's a, it's a two-part item on Thingiverse but I've only printed the top part just as a cover for the, the gas nozzle just to make sure that it's nice and safe. Pressure fit it just clips in and as you can hear a nice sort of satisfying click and that means that that gas canister now is protected on that nozzle as well. So print number one is really quite small, but it just means that it fits in there. The second part of the print is a collar that goes around here um, and you can attach them together with a piece of string. But I didn't print that one because I didn't think it was necessary for my application, but appreciate why it might be in a backpacking context. I've just printed this top bit and the, all the statistics in terms of filament weight and time only relate to the, the first bit. So that's print number one is a gas canister cap for your cylinder gas canisters. Number two is bathroom essentials, door hooks. Some of the campsites that we go to, there's just not enough hooks to hang your stuff on when you're in the shower. I originally started with this one. It's not very strong, so I'm not gonna include the link to that one, but I am gonna include the link to this one. It is so strong. I printed it with a 50% infill on this one just so that it has a bit stronger and it fits most doors in the UK. And it just means that I've got an extra something to hang my clothes on or my wash bag on. And what I do actually do is I'm gonna have a couple of these in my wash bag at all times I and mean, it just means that I've always got somewhere to hang both my towel, my wash bag, my dry clothes and my dirty clothes so for the sake of printing these out a door hanger of some description is well worth having and again even if you don't have a 3d printer you can get these quite cheaply on Amazon so please do consider that I can put some alternatives in the description if you want from Amazon just so that you've got them there as well. So number three is another bathroom thing and it seems like a lot of these are. I don't have any b-roll for this for understandable reasons in a second but what this funny device is is for those timer showers you know the ones where you press the button and you get a predetermined amount of hot water before you then have to press the button again. It might not sound like a big deal having to keep pressing the button but when you just want a hot shower after a day of hiking and sort of exploring it's annoying having to keep pressing it on so what this is is you put it on and then twist it and it keeps the button pressed in permanently. 
and it, it, it's just been really really nice to have a permanent shower on a, on a campsite again I take this with me so that it doesn't waste the water on the campsite over the course of a shower it's not making that much difference so it's not like I feel like I'm taking advantage of the situation it's just something just a nice usability feature again small enough that it lives in my wash bag all the time so like you say it goes on twists and pressed there is a couple of different versions of these available if you want to buy one as well so link will be in the description for that um, as an alternative and funny enough the next one is another bathroom item you might not be able to see it very well on camera because of the white until i show you the one that i painted myself this is just an occupied door hanger we were at a campsite recently where there was toilets which locked but there was no way to show from the outside whether it was in use or not and when you were in the shower in the same sort of cubicle and people kept trying the door it was a little bit alarming and you were putting a lot of trust in that lock so we printed these and one for me and one for my partner and we're just going to have these so that we can quickly slip them on the outside of the door whilst we're in there and again small enough to live in our wash bag it will just stay in there permanently i painted this one so that it's a bit more obvious i'm going to do the same on this one these didn't exist and i couldn't find them anywhere so i modeled this on fusion 360 but again the link is available on thingiverse so if you do want one please go and download it it is completely free but some kind of occupied door hanger just stops those unwelcome knocks on the door. I'm gonna go for this one next again. So these are just little spice containers. PLA is deemed food safe, but make sure your individual filament is. They are a little bit stiff in terms of the thread when they first print, but it wears in. Just give it a, a back and forward a few times. These were on Thingiverse. I, I, I printed quite a lot of different containers until I found one that I was happy with. And then what I wanted was something that would keep all of them together. So I printed a black and a white one for salt and pepper. And then I printed four separate ones in grey for four other spices. Now, I wanted something to put them in. I couldn't find something to put them in. So again, I modelled it on Fusion 360. Took way more um, attempts than I would care to admit to get it to fit and whatever. I did it and I'm quite proud of it. And I really like how it's printed. It's printed really, really well, actually. And now it just means that all my spices are together in a nice little rack. This wouldn't be particularly out of place on a bench in a kitchen, um, you know, either stuck to a wall or stood up on the corner, but it just means that when we're cooking, when we're out camping, I can just lift this whole thing out, have it on the table like I've got now, and then that's it, my spices are ready to go. You can print in the original file a ring out of TPU, so that it would be completely airtight. The only thing you need to remember is check your filament is food safe. Right, so we're halfway through, we've got five down, five to go. Um, I'm gonna start with some of the smaller ones again, and this is something that I really, really like. It is a can opener and can protector at the same time. If you don't have very long fingernails, you can sometimes find opening a can like this quite difficult. So you can use that to slide under the tab, and then what you do is you just can be your lever to crack it open. And now you go, oh, well, I've got an open can of pop. You clip it back down and clip it around, and then that's it. It's not going to be watertight, but what I like most about it is it keeps wasps and other flying things out of your drink. For the rest of today's filming, I'm going to leave that on so that I don't have to worry about any flies getting in my drink. Um, and then when you do want a drink, you just spin it round, and then that's it. But it kind of locks into the, the can quite nicely. There are other sort of clip-on things that you can get, which I have got, and, and again, we'll provide a link in the description for, provide a similar sort of solution to that problem. But if you've got a 3D printer, a couple of pens, and you're done and sorted with that. So that's that one, a little can defender and can opener. So next up is a bit of a party print, and that is a shotgun tool for beer and cans and things like that. It's not one I use very often, but it's just a fun tool to have in case you ever need it. It is one of the first prints that I did because it's quite an easy, safe print and quite small, so I could see some success quite quickly. The way the model is laid out on Thingiverse suggests printing it on its back, which means you've then got to print some supports across the back. I think it works best if you print it on its side and then it prints up from the bed upwards, and it's just a lot cleaner and there's a lot less clean up to do. So as you know, you just clip this on the bottom of a can, purse the hole in the bottom, and then you open it from the top and it just gushes in. It's a good way to get those people who turn up late to a campsite um, caught up on the festivities and enjoy camping quicker than everybody else. So it's just a cool little tool just to chuck in a box and enjoy. The next two I'm going to do together because they work best together. It's a rope spool and a line tensioner. You might have a washing line with you, you might have a different way of doing it, but I use this, I tie it off around a tree, and it's what I dry my clothes on when we're out, sort of, and we need to wash some things or have some towels to dry. Before this, the, the washing line was just a mess in one of the boxes. Now it's held together quite compact. This is about, I think it's four or five meters of washing line, just tied up in this. So I tie off one end around a tree, 
using this line tensioner and it's just a way that you can loop in and around a few times and use it in a certain way that means your washing line's not going to come off at that end you can just loop that around a tree a few times and use friction to hold it in place then you've got your homemade washing line solution so that then you can stay out for even longer because you can wash your clothes if you use like active wear um, that's quick drying sorted rope spool holder and a line tensioner again both of which alternatives are available so if you don't have a 3d printer you can still have them and last but not least is this big box which I've been saving until last to generate a bit of mystery. So I'd be very intrigued as if you can guess what this box is without skipping ahead and cheating. So chuck a comment below if you can guess what this box is and then I'm going to tell you what it's for. You ready? It's an egg box. Um, I don't know if anybody got that right. Well done if you did without cheating. That holds, as you can see, six eggs and it's nice and solid and so is the lid. And I know that once I put that in, that can go in one of my food boxes or in my fridge or whatever, and those eggs are protected. A lot of people say, well, why don't you just leave it in the paper box that it comes in? This won't succumb to condensation, whereas a paper box will and will degrade over time. This is just robust and it's done and sorted. It's probably the biggest print of the lot because this is particularly quite solid. I now know I've got somewhere safe to store my eggs and it's actually just been a really good exercise in getting a good print over a big distance. So thank you very much to whoever modelled that. The link for it on Thingiverse will be below. And yeah, that's number 10, an egg box. So there you have it. There are 10 Overland and Adventure 3D prints that you could use to maybe improve your experience around your campsite and from your vehicle. None of these are essential. All of these are available as alternatives. So if, so if you don't have a 3D printer, jump in the description below and there'll be links to alternatives that uh, can maybe help you on your way to get them. 3D printer is a great tool for a lot of different reasons and it is something that I'm really, really enjoying exploring and sort of modeling and designing things from there. So keep an eye out. There might be something coming in the future. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate this is a bit different from normal, but sort of normal service will be resumed. Please feel free to share this amongst anybody you think that might like it. So hit that subscribe button if you think I've earned it, as well as a like rating and a comment. All of those are things that you can do for free that would really help this channel grow and help me make these videos keep going forward in the future. And if nothing else, remember the best adventures are had outdoors, so let's get out there and have some fun. Cheers, bye bye. Where do we want to start? Unwelcome knocks on the door, or as in the UK as we call it, a turd burglar. We've got. We're about half. We are halfway through. So, on relation to cans, this is another one. Um, this is more for... In relation to print, it's quite a safe print. It's not really going to fail. So, yeah. No! Next two, I'm going to do together because they kind of work best together. It's a rope tool and... The next two I'm going to do together because they work best together. It's a rope spool and a line tensioner.